come today to honor the lives of those who have freely given of themselves in life and even in death for the welfare of others. We uh, come together this morning to honor those who have went on before us and, and given their lives for this city, for this community. We thank them, we thank you for being here. This year we're adding one to our list. Sadly, we're adding one to our list, but it's also a good time because we found out we had another, and we can honor him too. Firefighters and emergency services personnel play an essential role in the protection of lives, in the, in the protection of lives and property in our community and it is of major importance that we increase our efforts to reduce deaths, injuries, and property losses from fire. It is a solemn occasion, folks, but it's something we need to make sure that we continue to carry on. And that serves as a reminder of all of us, the ultimate price that they make to protect us and our lives and our families. A big project is because of this young man, Louis Patello. He, come, he came to my office about four and a half years ago and uh, wanted a project to do. Let's hang some smoke alarms or something. That's, well, uh, our department, we, we kind of saturated the community with, with smoke alarms and with little, pro, little programs. It, uh, I was talking to him, that wasn't good enough for him. Uh, so let's, let's move up and maybe build some benches or something. Well, is there a project? Bigger than that, Mr. Martin, that's what he asked me. Well, there was something on our mind. We had found out by uh, uh, some research from uh, Daryl and Gene Butler uh, here in, in Dyersburg. They do the Page and Time magazine of these firefighters over the years that have lost their lives. And we had talked about it for, for quite some time and uh, how we could honor them and such. That's how the project got started. Lewis wanted to do it. so. About a year and a half later, we set this memorial. And I just want to thank the family of Lewis, uh, his mom and dad and sister, for their dedication toward it also. I want to recount the, some of the events that led up to uh, September 14, 1935. At 8.45 a.m. on Saturday, September 14, 1935, the Dyer Group Fire Department responded to a fire at the old city dump where it was reported that a truck was on fire. Just a truck fire. While fighting the fire, the truck's fuel tank exploded. At that time, personal protective gear was virtually non-existent, if there was any at all, which likely contributed to the outcome of this event. Firefighter Byer and Rob suffered severe burns as a result of the explosion and was rushed to the Barry Brewer Hospital where he died at 4 p.m. that afternoon. Another firefighter, Jeff Alford, he received burns but recovered. Firefighter Byron Robbins went to Dyer Group Fire Department in 1932. Funeral services and burial took place at the White Hill Cemetery in Princeton, Indiana, if that was his hometown. His name will be added to the Dyer Group Fire Department Memorial Tennessee Fallen Firefighters Monument, which is located in Bell Buckle, Tennessee, and the National Fallen Firefighters Monument in Emmitsburg, Maryland. And then again, tragic events unfolded January 12, 1942. At 4.49 a.m. on January 12, 1942, the Dyersburg Fire Department responded to a fire at the Tennessee Hotel and Homer Presley Furniture Company. Fire was reported by a gas station attendant that Monday morning. Snow had covered the ground for two weeks and temperatures were near zero or below every day. At that time, the fire department was located at the end of East Market and the fire was just around the corner on Cedar, Cedar in Maine. The fire department log noted that soon after arriving, firefighter Richard Newble and firefighter Obie Bishop were seriously burned on their hands and arms and they were trapped in the basement of the building at approximately 5 10 a.m. They were transported to the Barry Brewer Hospital at the north end of Maine. Fortunately, 
all the residents of the Tennessee Hotel, which was located on the third floor of the building, were evacuated before the fire spread. The ground floor of this building was occupied by several businesses. The fire continued to spread, reaching the building occupied by the Homer Pressman Furniture Company and a barber shop. 54 minutes into the fire, the south wall of the three-story Tennessee Hotel building collapsed, striking three firefighters. Firefighter William Bill Dudley was killed instantly. He was a volunteer fireman who was employed as a plumber by the City Water and Light Department. Firefighter Pratt Fletcher sustained head injuries, a crushed chest, and a broken leg. He was transported to the Barrier Hospital where he died at 10 a.m. that morning. Firefighter Holly Marley, also struck by the wall, sustained a crushed chest, back injuries, and a fractured leg. He recovered and returned to work six months later on July the 18th, 1942. Dyersburg Fire Department Chief Barney Hunter in charge contained the fire to the two buildings and prevented the windswept flames from jumping the alley into the Piggy Wiggy Grocery. After a very long day, Department finally returned to quarters at 8.45 p.m. that night. Services for Firefighter Dudley and Firefighter Fletcher were held the following day. Funeral services for Firefighter William Bill Dudley were held in the Chapel of Curry's funeral home at 3 p.m. Tuesday, January the 13th, 1942. He was survived by his wife, Mrs. Wilma Dudley, his parents, Mr. and Mrs. Daniel Dudley, and a son, William Curry Dudley. Services for Firefighter Pratt Fletcher were held at the First Baptist Church in Dyer, Tennessee at 3 p.m. Tuesday, January 13, 1942. Firefighter Pratt Fletcher had moved to Dyersburg around 1932 and had been employed with the Dyersburg Fire Department since 1933. He was survived by his wife, Mrs. Patty Bonville Fletcher, a daughter, a daughter, Mrs. Leon Fuller, and a son, Boyd Fletcher. Where did we go wrong? And what did we do to make you hide your face? We lost our way. There's no light in our days. We are walking in circles because we strayed from your grace. Which way do we go? And what do we do? Find our way back to you, and this is what he told me. It might be home, yeah. home by my name. Yeah, yeah, yes. We'll come for them. Thank you. 